Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about something very interesting here. As you can see, or maybe tell from my channel, that I'm a little bit fascinated with mini PC. So you're probably wondering, what is the review about? Well, it's not this keyboard. It's actually this mini PC here that's in the back. This is the Chewy U-Box mini PC featuring the Ryzen 6600H. And in this video, we're going to talk about what it brings to the table, what it has to offer, who is it for, and basically what is the use cases for a mini PC such as this. As you can see here, it basically frees up all of my desk space here it sits atop my desk i have access to all of the ports here and i've got my nice little keyboard here connected stay tuned for the review for this coming as well but first a quick disclaimer here so this device was purchased with my own money regardless all of the content and opinions you'll hear in this video are entirely my own and nobody has had editorial review of the content here in that said if you like any of the products that i review and you wish to purchase them please check the links in the description below i often provide discount codes to help you save a little bit of money and of course if you want to support the channel a bit further click on the copy link in the description below to give us a tip it goes a long way and it's really appreciated for independent creators such as myself all right now let's talk about the actual device here we'll take a look at the device it is a plastic construction plastic both on the top and the bottom we have a metal chassis however here uh, with plastic plates that are kind of surround or wrap the actual metal chassis itself there are some screw holes here as well for multiple different types of mounting options as well so it can really be tucked away behind a monitor and it will be basically out of your way but giving you that you know silent and kind of uh, tucked away computing experience if you like giving you a more discreet experience but a full-fledged desktop cpu so here we have you know on the front panel we have some black and there's these nice kind of rivets that actual uh you know circle the entire device here at an angle they also serve as uh, inlets for air intake for the fans there's also air intake on the bottom as well and there's these rubber fans here so it sits nicely on your desk and it's not going to slide around too much and that's not going to be much of an issue there is a little bit of a nice design here and perforation again for additional fans to uh, or for air intake for those fans and a nice little kind of uh, triangular design here so it's a uh, it has a little bit of a nice aesthetic to it and finally just some chewy branding up here in silver lettering so if we take a look at the port station on uh, situation on this device I believe it's actually very well equipped for the level of device that it is we've got a power button on the front headphone microphone combo jack USB type C port this one is 3.2 gen 2 so you're gonna get a full 20 gigabits per second here we've got two USB type 3.2 Gen 1 A ports, so these are 5 gigabits per second each. Nice to say we get the speedier ports on the front. Uh, nothing much on the left hand side except some stickers to indicate that this is a Ryzen uh, 5 CPU and Radeon graphics. There's two different variations here. I've got the Ryzen 6600H version. There is also a 7430 available as well. It's a little bit newer generation, but you know, alas, it's pretty much uh, very similar performance. Uh, all right, finally, then we have here a Kensington lock port and around the back we see this is where the brunt of the ports are and a nice selection of ports at that we have a usb 2.0 port i guess for plugging in your mouse we have a usb 3 additional usb 3.0 port or perhaps these are both usb 2 i'm not quite sure we have a display port 1.2 port we have an hdmi 2.0 port this is not hdmi 2.1 because we don't have uh, discrete graphics here and it's not going to need to go that high in terms of the frame rate so hdmi 2.0 2.0 port is uh, what we get here and then finally we have two two and a half gigabit ethernet ports this is fantastic unheard of so the fact that you have two two and a half gigabit LAN ports you could you know in software uh, pair these together or bond them and if you have an equivalent equivalent hardware on the other end you can actually get a five gigabit uh, throughput port uh, on this particular device it can serve as a nice little home server serve as a nice backup server you know a, a, a dev box for doing all of your virtual machines and your work like that and plenty of other scenarios, even a firewall and other things like that, this could be loaded on as your little, uh, you know, home server as well. And finally, just a DC in jack, and we have some inlets here. We can see that there's a pretty beefy heat sink to keep this thing nice and cool. It runs fairly quiet, but we'll talk about the noise a little bit later in the section. Now, because this is a mini PC, generally this would come as a bare bone setup, which means you have to buy this, install your own RAM and your storage. This one here, I've equipped with 512 gigs of SSD. Uh, three point, this is now keep in mind this is a little bit older device so we have only PCI Gen 3 speeds and half a terabyte of uh, storage in here we do have two slots we'll take a look at that in just a moment and you can also add you know 5600 or 4800 megahertz so you pop off the cover like that's quite simple made of plastic 
just be careful it kind of clips on it's a little bit tricky sometimes to clip back on but you know nothing too crazy so we have this additional heat sink slash cooling here which if you lift this up like this you have also some uh, you know thermal pads here to allow uh, heat dissipation from the actual SSDs because they can get quite hot and if we look here, we've got two sodium slots here for RAM up to 4800 megahertz in terms of speed. We're not going to get 5600 megahertz RAM here. However, this is luckily built with the 6600H. This is DDR5, so it's a little bit better than if you were to get the 7430U. Despite having the same number of cores and seeming like it's a newer model number, you're only going to get 3200 megahertz speeds here with only DDR4 for the 7430U. So do be careful about that. Check the specs before you buy this particular device. And of course, we have one SSD slot here this is a, a gen 3 uh, device here that's installed 500 gigs this is what came with the device and of course we have an additional open slot here with, with SSD to uh, add potentially additional storage so once you have all of that installed you can get your device up and running we'll place this back here to keep our housing cool like that make sure you clip it or snap it in place it was loose as you can you know, may have noticed uh, and then finally so these are clips you'll need to kind of adjust a little bit find the locks here and then once it snaps into place you'll get a very nice and loud sound like that which means it's going to be securely uh, you know uh, housed and onto the actual device itself okay let's get this thing powered on now we'll talk about the rest of usability of this device uh, in the remainder of this video all right, so we can uh, reboot this PC here and we can press escape to enter our BIOS. And then we'll see here that the BIOS is actually pretty basic. There's not a lot of configurability here, but I guess it reports in that we have a Ryzen 5 6600H uh, CPU and all of that other stuff. Now, if you look at the boot here, this is what we're particularly interested in. So we're gonna move this up so we can boot from our USB. And this one should be Windows. So we'll save and exit. All right, so once we change our boot configuration, we'll now see what is the compatibility life. There it is, it's very easy. And we'll go into our Linux compatibility test here. So we're gonna boot Kubuntu. This is the latest 25.04 with all of the kernel goodies and everything from 2025. So it should be a pretty modern kernel or very modern uh, UI and desktop experience. Let's see how this looks on the Chewy U box. And we wanna see if everything here is compatible uh, so let's see, do we have detection of Wi-Fi? Yeah, audio is detected. I don't have any speakers hooked up to this, so that's why we're not seeing that. Uh, we also have, let's see, for network, we have our Ethernet bridge, but we also have Wi-Fi. And now it says that our wireless wired connection is disabled. And now we can use this to find all of our different wireless networks. So wireless connectivity is working. Our Bluetooth is working here, so if we click pair device, it starts to stir, search and scan for devices. You can see here our CPU cores, our memory, and our network. So everything here looks pretty good. Everything looks to be compatible. Now, of course, because this is a uh, because this is a iGPU only setup, you won't be able to do any gaming here. But you know, Linux compatibility looks very good. All right, we'll talk about the fan noise here of this device pretty quickly. So after a couple of different runs here of Cinebench, I'm running Cinebench 2024 again, and we're seeing how much it can generate in terms of noise. You can see here that in, you know, in Task Manager, we've got all six uh, uh, cores and 12 threads loaded up. So it's 100% CPU utilization. We've got 90% utilization as well with only 16 gigs of RAM here. It's just barely above, uh, you know, silent in terms of it's audible. You can tell that the fans are running, but at 42 decibels, it's certainly not going to be breaking any eardrums or, or anything of that sort. All right, and finally a peek at the thermals here. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, exhaust being uh, you know, spit out the back here, about 42 degrees in terms of temperatures. A little bit of a hot spot there in the center. 
and you can see a lot of heat coming from around that heat sink here but despite all the colors here the temperatures are actually quite good they're only 42 i see a 44 degree max here 39 40 uh, in terms of you know you're not going to be touching this on a daily basis so as it sits on your desk i think it's pretty comfortable and nothing really to complain about here in terms of thermal performance so then, to conclude about the Chewy U box here, as you can see here, it nicely tucks away under your monitor, giving you lots of desk real estate back. It has enough power to do lots of you know tasks. For example, with the Ryzen 5 6600 6 core, 12 threads, it would it would have been a mainstream laptop from just a few years ago. I would have had plenty of power to do everything, including gaming, etc. Everything, considering the fact that this doesn't have a very high power iGPU or any DTPU, you're not going to be doing gaming here. But pretty much everything else is you know up for par here, par for the course. So you can use this as a PFSense device, set up yourself a firewall, a little home server, even a mini streaming box, and it's going to work fantastic for that. If you check out the Juvi website and you check out the other sales channels through which this device is available, you can often find, find it highly discounted since it is an older device. You may even be able to find it in clearance in some uh, places for a pretty steep discount. So if you can pick that up, if you're looking for a little home server, a project, a media box, you know, any of those things that I've described above, and you want to do it yourself, but have something that's, you know, nice and easy to tuck away so you can have your main desktop, perhaps a laptop, and then this true Wii U box here for even a project playground, then this is going to be a fantastic choice for you. So anyway, that's all I really have to say about this device. I really liked what I, you know, what I saw here and how it performed. I think it has a very good usability. And, you know, the purpose for this, there's, you know, many little purposes that you can put this for, and it's going to be a lot of fun for you. So that said, uh, if you like my content, please click the like button, click subscribe and click that notification bell. So you're the first to know when there's new content available here. And also, if you like any of the products I review, please check the description down below. I often leave links in the description accompanied with discount codes to help you save a little bit of money. And of course, if you want to support the channel a bit further, do check out the coffee link in the description. A little tip goes a long way to help independent creators such as myself. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.